Good morning, all. It seems like it's been forever since we've had a chance to talk. Which is a hilarious statement, because you and I actually never get to talk. Maybe a little comment back and forth. But I wish we could talk. I wish that was a thing. Today, I'm so nervous about this one. Today, we're going to try and tackle a skunk. I haven't seen any more than what we got right here, so... Look, I'm not afraid of a smell. But I'm not interested in stinking up my neighborhood or my house. Uh -oh. That'd be the view. One thing about that critter, man, they're beautiful. <laughs> One of the things that has changed a little bit on YouTube is they absolutely do not want us killing or skinning on camera. I'm not going to stop doing that as of right now because I think it is important for you to be able to see the step of the skin removal. I want to emphasize the fact that whatever happens to this animal at this point doesn't change the life of this animal. So this animal died of either A, natural causes, or maybe even a car accident. This animal was not shot by a hunter. Even if it was, I'm indifferent toward that. But there's a lot of people that makes a big difference too. So I'm going to skin the head of this. And again, it doesn't change the outcome. At this point, all I'm going to do is clean up that skull and give that animal a little piece of respect pretty good chance that skull is going to go to a school or a science center somewhere and kids are going to be able to learn a little bit about skunks and how they're similar to other animals. So if you don't want to see that part, please turn it off. We're going to get busy. All right. First step, you want to remove the hide from around the skull and then separate that skull from the spine. I'm just gonna let it roll in real time here. For whatever reason, I've always made a cut kind of up the center of the head and then just peeled my way around. You don't need to be delicate here for skull work. Remove as much stuff as you can. It just helps you on the next step. I have cleaned a number of skunks in my day, but I don't ever remember seeing them with nails this long. It was a very beautiful, very unique animal. Some of you may have already noticed when I was looking at the teeth of this skunk that the bottom right canine was broke and it had a little, I don't look like tartar on there. And if you look right here where I'm skinning, see the dark mark in the jaw? That's always an indicator of a break, damage, injury, illness, something like that. And we find out later that there was some sort of bone deficiency in the jaw of this skunk. So in order to remove the head, I push the chin up and I cut underneath and then I push the chin down and I cut from behind and then just give a good twist and that head will come right off. Skunk, Martin from Alaska, raccoon, which we've already done, and a lynx cleaning out the freezer, getting everything caught up. I take these commercial pasta strainers from the uh, restaurant supply and I'm just gonna drop it in there and contrary to what I always tell you I'm not I'm just gonna show you another method today um, I'm not gonna take any other meat off these animals I'm just gonna drop them in the already warm peroxide this is the different part normally I would boil with water and power wash I'm just gonna put them right in the color batch because I've already got it hot I just finished another project so Follow me. I'm going to let that just do its thing. That's a crazy hot batch of stuff. You can see how fast it's already turned that way. You see how fast it's attacking that flesh. For those of you new to the channel, this mix that I'm referring to is 50% water, 
50% hydrogen peroxide. The strength of that peroxide is 40% by volume. It's a liquid developer. I get it at the beauty supply. All right, see how it's starting to foam up? So I just brought it to a boil and I cut the fire off. Peroxide at a boil or a peroxide mix at a boil will literally just continue to boil and, and just store that heat for a super long time. Time to suit up and do some squirting. New power washer. This one on sale at Lowe's for $79. What in the world? First dip, getting dressed by myself. Okay. Well, let's do this. Okay, here's the rundown. We skinned them. We boiled them in the hydrogen peroxide mix. We boil them just long enough to where the skin on top of the nose starts to split. Then I take that power washer from Lowe's, that little 1600 PSI power washer, and I wash all the meat and tissue off. As a rule, white bone creations law you wash every hole and every orifice anywhere there's meat or tissue you gotta make it go away So by the, whew, don't breathe that peroxide. So from the time that we remove the skin and put it in the pot until this point in the skull cleaning process, seven minutes, okay? Anybody can do this. You just need a skull and a handful of tools. Now the bottom jaw of that skunk, he had some sort of calcification in his jaw and there's a big hole there. So we're gonna have to put that back together. I had to rinse it all clean, but so this skull is just right out of the color batch and clean. You can see all the little dark spots in there. That's places where the product is never touched. So what we're gonna do is drop it back in the basket once everything is clean and we're gonna let peroxide touch all those areas and it'll bright white it. I just wanna reiterate that the method that I show you guys here is very, very production. It's designed to get a bunch of skulls done in a hurry for hunters, primarily. I'm not putting out, and I don't ever want to mislead, I'm never putting out like a museum quality uh, where they want to have everything intact. I like the nasal cavities gone. I like the auditory bull gone. I like, I like that stuff gone. That doesn't fly in everybody's world. So remember, what I'm showing you here is how you get a skull done fast and turned around to typically a sportsman. So uh, in this method, you can see that it's a bit messy. It's easy to clean up. I wash and degrease. And then I'll have to do quite a bit of gluing on those small animals because some of those teeth will fly out or it'll make it weak in the nasal, um, I don't know, the nose piece. So I have to glue all that back together, but start to finish, 30 minutes, four skulls. That's from touching it with a knife to having them done. So just remember, that's what this method is. Okay, we got them cleaned. You could see some of those dark areas. So I dropped it back in the hot peroxide mix. I give it three or four minutes tops. These are small skulls. They don't need a bunch of time. And then I rinse them good with the hose and let them sit and dry. I typically will put them in front of a little fan just to get them nice and dry. Once the skull is dry, I do any sort of glue work. Glue back in teeth, glue bottom jaws in place, that sort of stuff, as soon as it's dry. Hello, hello. I've just been missing you guys. I think it's been too long since we, uh, we've put together a film, so glad we're here together. I 
I got so many skulls here. I'm not sure which video this is for, so let's just do a few. Let's clean up the skunk. El Escunque. This little skunk right here uh, had some sort of bone deficiency. See the side of his mouth? It's all warped and rotted there. I think being a little residential skunk, a side of the road kill type skunk, I think they get into fertilizers or maybe actual poisons for rats or something like that and it decays them. This raccoon has got the exact same symptom. Ouchie. So, next step, mop a glow. I'm just going to take a little brush and I'm going to get it all wet with mop and glow real quick. And I'm going to put it back in front of that little fan to dry. What does that do? That seals the bone, gives it a real light kind of a sheen. Not a shine, I don't like the word shine. It's kind of funny because my wife's name is Sunshine. Hey, what's happening? Just had a guy say, is that a skunk skull in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? And I was like, no, nah, skunk skull. Check it out. We just about done. Oh, how do we get to, how do we avoid that shadow? I got this. Hold on. I got mad skills. Boom. Oh, maybe boom. There's skunk skull. What a rad little animal, right? This is that um, that part I was talking about where he is, uh, has some sort of decay. Got a little bone deficiency on top there, but just a rocking little critter. I don't know about anybody else, but it's so hard for me to be able to see myself and talk to you without watching me. Weird. Hey, the skunk skull, just another beautiful animal. Same principles apply. Wash them, make them beautiful, pay them a little respect. Thank you so much for watching as always. I love you. Till next time. <clears throat> mm.